With Genshin Impact version 2.6, we have finally received the long-awaited Kamisato Ayuto. Thankfully, unlike with my normal gameplay design analyses, there isn't a whole lot for me to criticize within Ayuto's kit. He pretty much hit all of the marks, functioning how he's supposed to as a DPS with a nice mix of some off-field elements, providing something unique to team compositions, and having a fresh new take on gameplay that feels fluid and fun. But there was one thing which bothered me as soon as I heard it, and now that I have my hands on the character, I've been able to investigate it a lot more closely. Of course, I'm referring to the strange choice to have Ayato's damage partially scale off of his maximum health. In case you aren't completely familiar with Ayato's kit, or the text confused you because it suffers from referencing proper name syndrome, I'll quickly break it down in simpler terms. His elemental skill leaves an illusion that explodes if opponents are nearby or, after 6 seconds, dealing area of effect hydro damage. At the same time, for 6 seconds he enters a state in which his normal attack combo is replaced by a 3 hit combo of AoE hydro damage. Each slash builds up a stack that increases this move's damage based on Ayato's current max HP up to 4 times. His burst is much more simple as it casts a large circular area in which blades fall, dealing hydro damage and increasing the normal attack damage of allies inside for 18 seconds. The first ascension passive grants 2 stacks immediately when casting his elemental skill and max stacks if the illusion explodes early. And the fourth ascension passive lets Ayato passively restore 2 energy per second while off field up to halfway at 40. Alright, now we can get into it. What exactly is the point of Ayato's increased damage from his elemental skills stacks scaling with his max HP rather than just attack? Now, HP scaling isn't anything new of course. Most healers and healers have it, which makes sense because it makes this stat much more useful, and you probably wouldn't be building damage on them anyway. But Ayato's HP scaling only contributes to his damage and nothing else. Hu Tao is the only other DPS character with max HP scaling on her damage due to her elemental skill, but for her it makes a lot more sense. Having more health means she can remain below the 50% HP threshold to optimize her damage through her 4th ascension passive and burst without being as susceptible to actually dying. Building some HP is beneficial to her, and so the alternate scaling makes it so that she isn't deprived of damage just because you build HP on her. Ayato is a much different case though because he doesn't really benefit from having more HP besides that specific scaling. The game doesn't even give you a whole lot of ways to stack it on him to begin with since his ascension stat, signature weapon substat, signature weapon passive, and artifact set all give normal DPS stats that don't affect his health. Also, unlike say, elemental mastery scalings, there aren't any support characters in the game that can increase the max HP of allies. Currently, there aren't even any swords in the game that have HP as a substat, only the primordial jade cutter with its passive. So the important thing that needs to be considered before moving forward is how much does it actually matter? Does Ayato need to build HP in order to actually do damage? Because if so, the scaling will have the opposite effect of what I mentioned before because it adds an extra stat that you have to build. I'm not even going to pretend like I know how to do damage calculations, but thankfully from everything I've seen around, the answer is no. He seems to benefit much more from building attack, crit, and even a bit of energy recharge. So in terms of actual implications of this health scaling being in place, the main one I see is that it's more of a quality of life addition for artifacts, because you don't necessarily want HP rolls on your substats, but if you get it then it doesn't feel completely trivial since it actually increases your damage. But is there anything more to it? Well, as you might have already guessed, there is one thing which does temporarily buff Ayato's max HP and by quite a lot, being his second constellation. C2 World Source increases Ayato's maximum stack count from 4 to 5, and when he has at least 3 stacks, his maximum HP is increased by a big 50%. Uh huh. So this looks pretty bad, right? Essentially locking this part of his kit off for it to only be opened by a paid upgrade. But honestly, after thinking more and more about it, I don't think this as a design philosophy is something to be concerned about moving forward. I mean yes, it probably would have made a lot more sense for his stacks to scale off attack or even something else, but the real alternative here is the damage instead being just flat out locked behind a constellation. Damage will be gated by constellations in this game. It's inevitable because the game needs funding to keep pushing out free content, and that's okay as long as the character is still functional and feels complete without them, which is true for Ayato. Another thing to consider with this though is that I think this decision will pan out even better in the long term compared to the short term. 
We will eventually get more swords that give health, and we'll probably get a support character who can boost max HP sooner or later. I know that calls into question the idea of force synergy and counterpart characters, but there are other characters in the game who would benefit from such a support existing. So while yes, currently this scaling looks like it only exists as an encouragement to roll for a second and third Ayato, it actually presents itself as a method of gating damage in a much less egregious way, while also giving a typically trivial stat importance, and better opening the door for indirect buffs down the line. From what I've seen, Ayato's damage and overall performance is very competitive even at Constellation Zero with no external investment in health. So yes, while I was initially very concerned about this mechanics inclusion, I now see absolutely no problem with it. I really didn't expect my viewpoint to change that much going into this, but now I can have no qualms about liking Aito's gameplay design. I hope you found this video to be interesting or insightful, and as always, thanks for watching.